Hi, Jamie here. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I get a lot of questions from potential clients about what the difference between a fault divorce and a no-fault divorce is in New Jersey and why you would use one versus the other. I want to provide you with some general information today about the differences between fault and no-fault divorce and when they should be utilized. Let's start with some basics about no-fault divorce. Simply put, no-fault divorce means that the court isn't really concerned with who is at fault in ending the relationship. They are only concerned with the fact that irreconcilable differences arose between you and your spouse. They existed for a period of six months or more prior to the time a complaint or a counterclaim for divorce is filed, and that there's no reasonable prospect for reconciliation. If you can prove these three aspects by testimony in front of a court, you are going to provide them with the grounds to issue a divorce decree based on no-fault divorce. So now that you know what no-fault divorce means, the next thing I want to cover is why we utilize that as a grounds for divorce. Simply put, it's the easiest way to approach a divorce. If you're settlement driven and you want to resolve the issues and you're not focused on casting blame one party from the other, then typically you're going to file a complaint for divorce or a counterclaim based on irreconcilable differences. One of the benefits is that you're not focused on proving fault-based grounds for divorce, which we'll get to in a second. It's not about who did what to who. A lot of times in those cases, the family suffers because the kids get thrown into it. There's a lot of stress and anger and frustration, and that creates a situation where resolving the case is not possible. Fault-based versus not fault-based divorce is a really important distinction that you have to make at the outset of your case so that you understand which approach you want. If you're settlement-minded and want to explore alternative dispute resolution like mediation, typically your best bet is to file based on no fault in New Jersey. Another benefit of filing for no fault divorce in New Jersey is that typically the process is quicker. If you're not focused on proving a fault-based grounds for divorce in New Jersey, then a lot of times the matter can move more quickly, whether it's through the court system or through settlement. Because the focus is not on, again, blaming the other person, you can really focus on what the issues at hand are, whether those are custody, equitable distribution, alimony, child support, whatever the major issues in your case are, you can focus on them. A lot of times with fault-based divorce, the focus is on the conflict between the parties and not resolving the issues. Since New Jersey is a no-fault state, meaning that they recognize irreconcilable differences as a grounds for divorce, it became a lot less common for fault-based grounds to be used. That doesn't mean it never happens. There are instances in certain cases that require a fault-based grounds for divorce to be used, but it's not common. It's also something you want to talk about with an attorney at the outset. You want to make sure you understand the pros and cons of filing for fault-based divorce. It is likely going to prolong and protract your case, so you want to make sure you have all of that information at your fingertips at the outset. If you've made the decision to file a divorce based on fault grounds because you've consulted with an attorney and understand all of the pros and cons, one of the things that you have to understand is that you are going to have to prove the ground for divorce whether it is adultery, desertion, severe emotional distress, or others, you're going to have to prove to a court that these things in fact happen. And so in order to do that, there's going to be additional discovery that's required in order to prove just the grounds of your divorce. That discovery is independent of discovery that may be necessary in your case to determine what is appropriate support, child custody arrangements, equitable distribution. So this is another layer that you have to take into consideration when considering whether no fault or fault is the right option for you. Under certain circumstances, and after you've consulted with the right attorney, it may be necessary to file fault-based grounds versus no fault-based grounds. But it's important that you understand that you're making that decision for the right 
reasons. Don't file for fault simply because you want to get at your spouse. That's not going to benefit you. But if the circumstances are right and the attorney and you have consulted regarding it, it may impact things like alimony, child support, and child custody. So it's important to know when the appropriate times to file based on fault grounds are. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I know it was a lot of information, but I wanna make sure that you have the information necessary to make the next step forward. When you're ready to make the call and discuss whether fault-based or non-fault-based grounds are right for you, we're here to help. Please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and schedule a planning session with one of our attorneys so we can help you navigate this very important question.